So we are discussing this reading by SDSI, demographic deposit, dividend and debt. And if you look at this, uh, now we are going to talk about demographic dividend. And they say that if you really want to uh, reap the benefits of demographic dividend, you will have to invest more and more in increasing productivity of the nation. In, I mean, improving human capital formation, investing in human capital formation. So they say this, that uh, um, the two factors which are going to play a very, very important role in reaping the benefits of the demographic transition, they are, um, one is the improved capital, another is the high savings rate. Improved human capital, I'm sorry. So when you know what is physical capital, right? What is human capital? Human capital is that uh, you have invested in labor force. That labor force has become skilled, that is educated. So the same human can actually do more work. It can produce more output. Vis-a-vis -vis the person who is not that educated, who is not that skilled. So our idea should be to invest more and more into human capital formation so that People get more skilled and the productivity of the nation ultimately is going to increase. That's an idea. So one is improved human capital. So they say this that uh, uh, when the dependency ratios are going to decrease, right? that is uh, people will have fewer children. So see, the dependency ratios uh, uh, will be decreasing because of fewer children, but they might be increasing because of elderly population increasing. Here we are talking about the fertility decline and that is resulting in the decline in the dependency ratio. They are saying this, that if the family has fewer children, then they can invest in the in giving the better quality life to, to those children. right? And Ultimately, in case if everyone or if most of the families in the nation will have fewer children, then the state would also be burdened less. Uh, so state can also have more resources left with it, which it can invest in human capital formation, which it can invest in improving the skills of those children, which it can invest in improving the education of those fewer children. Mm. So it is helping family as well as state. When I say state, I mean government, right? Now, there are a few studies which have been done. One of the studies by Basu and Desai 2016, they say this, that uh, uh, those families which have single child, they invest 40% more in children's education as compared to those families who have two to three children. Hmm. So investment in children's education is proportional to the number of children in the family. Uh, so you have fewer children, you will have more investment. Uh, you will have more children in the family, fewer investment in education of each children of each child. Uh, children from a single family are about 6% more likely to attend private school in the rural areas and 12 percentage points more in the urban area. So this is what their studies are showing. This is showing the benefits of having fewer children in the family. There is an another study by Gary Becker. That's a pioneering study. And which says this, that uh, the reason families or parents would want to have uh, uh, lower, uh, I mean, smaller families is because they want to give quality life to their children, to their lesser number of children. They can invest in the quality education for that child. So the desire to invest in child quality is one of the primary reasons for curtailing fertility. So you have made one point. You made one point that having fewer children will help families in investing better in human capital formation, in investing in children's education. And then you have given uh, the evidences from the studies. So this is what we expect in the answer. That you make a point and then you give the evidence in the form of the data or evidence in the form of the study. 
This is the way we expect you to answer. Then, because families have fewer children now, ultimately lesser number of children are there in the country. So state will have also resources left to them, which they can invest in children's education. So state's investment in education and, and SSI says that, uh, I mean, if you look at Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan, the budgets for such kinds of programs, they have increased over the time. And recently also, there are many other programs which government has initiated in order to improve the skill level and the education level of people in the country. So state investments in education. But then there is a question. Okay, fine. We might be experiencing fertility decline and state is also investing more in education. So we would at least expect our children to read and write properly. That's what we expect, right? So there were studies which were taken up by, uh, there were few studies uh, by Pratham and the India Human Development Survey 1 and 2. Both of these studies, more or less, they found this, that instead of having an improvement in the reading skills of the children, right? I think the children of uh, 6 to 14 years, there is a slight decline in the reading ability of the children of 6 to 14 years. So this is not what we expect. Countries experiencing fertility decline. State is also investing more in education. So where are the outcomes? I mean, at least we expect our children to read and write properly. Reading a simple paragraph. But there was a slight decline in that. And not only that, India Human Development Survey 1 and 2 also has almost a similar uh, result. That is, there is slight decline in the reading skills rather than an improvement over the time. So it means that there is a need for investing in human capital formation, right? You can't just do a facelift. You need a proper approach where human uh, capital formation is going to be improved, right? Uh, then the another way you can uh, reap the benefits of demographic dividend and increasing productivity is if your savings are increased. So SSI says that if you compare um, current savings rate with the savings rate in 1980s, you will find a considerable improvement. But if you compare current savings rate with the peak of savings rate in 2007-8, then you will find that there is a decline in the domestic savings rate. So whether it is domestic savings or it is public savings or it is corporate savings, all of them have fallen. So in case of the savings are not going to be there, uh, savings are like supply of funds. So if supply of funds is not there, so then the people who are demanding funds, that is investment, that also is not going to be there. If investment is not going to be more, then uh, definitely there won't be any capital formation. So that's an idea. Uh, so the idea is that you need to pick up the savings rate. But in conclusion, what SSI is trying to say is that we understand this, that Savings are little lower as compared to the all-time high of 2007-8, right? But they're still high and we can do something to recover the uh, little declining savings rate and savings rate can increase. But the more acute problem is the loss in human capital formation, right? So we have to invest more in human capital formation in case we want to reap the benefits of the demographic dividend. So that is an idea. So the idea is, so in conclusion, what you can say, you can say that, yes, you need to invest in human capital formation. Yes, domestic savings have to be increased. Domestic savings, according to author, we will be able to recover faster as compared to the loss of human capital formation. That's an idea. Huh? So but this is what I wanted to do in this part. And hopefully I think I will be able to cover the reading by this eye in the next recording, right? So I hope you like it and it was a little useful to you, right? Please make notes, right? Don't think that you do not have to add on. You will have to add on, right? You will have to definitely read the readings. They are just helping you 
to read the reading. Don't take them as a substitute. Take them as a compliment. You will definitely have to read the reading. After listening to the, re after listening to the video, you'll be able to understand the reading well. Hmm? But you definitely, definitely have to read the reading and make notes. So don't try to use any shortcut. They will never, ever help you. Never, ever help you. So if you think, okay, chalo, main ye bas here recording dekh leta. Aise kuch nahi hone wala. And one thing you have to understand, you all of this, whatever you are doing, this is your job. Don't, you are not, you are not, when you are studying, you're not doing any ehsan on us. You're doing studies, you're not doing, you're not doing any favor to anyone except you. Understand this thing very, very well. I'm, and I want to tell my children, this is going to be useful. Uh, so this is your job and do it to the best of your ability as you can. Don't just uh, try to use any shortcuts. Don't think you have seen the recording. You do not have to read the reading. You still have to read it. There might be few points which you might have to add. There can be few points which you have to ask your teacher. Definitely. Uh, so please use them. Uh, chalo. Okay, beta. Thank you.